A common argument against Marxism that I've heard from the right is that Marxism cannot work because it strives after absolute equality, and this is bound to fail because humans are unequal by nature. What such critiques miss is that absolute equality is not what Marxism strives for. This is just one among many of the common misrepresentations you hear about Marxism, even though Marx and Engels were explicitly anti-egalitarian. Although the insights of Marx are helpful here, they are applicable to all political thought. Equality is meaningless if you don't specify what type of equality you are talking about. Imagine for instance that you have two sticks. What would it mean for them to be equal? Well, they might be equal in size, in length, in color, in texture, or any number of other qualities but they cannot be absolutely equal. The only way for two sticks to be absolutely equal would be for them to literally be one and the same stick. This is no different for people. Because for two people to be absolutely equal, they have to become the same person, a community of absolutely equal people is literally impossible. This is an insight that Marx and Engels pointed out, and yet, for example, Jordan Peterson makes this argument. This is also a big technical problem, is like, well, what measure of outcome? You know, there's lots of outcomes, like, how happy are you? How much pain are you in? How healthy are you? How much money do you have? How much opportunity for movement forward do you have? What's the width of your social connections? Like, what's the quality of your friendships? Do you have exposure to art and literature? Like, you know, you can multiply the number of dimensions of evaluation between people innumerably, right? Because there's, there's all sorts of ways to classify people. You're going to get equality of outcome on every one of those measures? Yet he does this thinking that he's making an argument against Marxism. Most people don't understand Marxism. Here's what Engels wrote in a letter in 1875. Between one country, one province, and even one place and another, living conditions will always evince a certain inequality, which may be reduced to a minimum, but never wholly eliminated. The living conditions of alpine dwellers will always be different from those of the plainsmen. The concept of a socialist society as a realm of equality is a one-sided French concept deriving from the old liberty, equality, fraternity, a concept which was justified in that in its own time and place, it signified a phase of development, but which, like all the one-sided ideas of earlier socialist schools, ought now to be superseded since they produce nothing but mental confusion and more accurate ways of presenting the matter have been discovered. Marx pointed out that making two people more equal in one respect necessarily makes them more unequal in another respect. Consider two workers working for a wage. Because of different capabilities, they work different hours, and you want to make them more equal. If you try to make them more equal by equalizing the wage they get per hour, they become unequal in their total earnings. On the other hand, if you equalize their total earnings, you make their hourly wage more unequal. And this applies across the board. Because of this, Marx never advocated abstract equality as a political goal, instead believing that whether an increase in equality is desirable or not should be judged individually in each given scenario and with regards to each given respect. For instance, in a hospital with limited staff, people will receive unequal amounts of medical attention based on how bad their medical condition is. And this is a good thing. Therefore, instead of advocating the abolition of political inequality, an abstract and vague goal, Marx advocated the abolition of class distinctions, a much more concrete goal. If you want a good video on this specific topic, I highly recommend an Arcopax video, Marx and Engels were not egalitarians. You might say now that I'm misrepresenting what people mean when they advocate for equality, that they mean something more specific, such as equality of opportunity or equality of outcome. However, both of these are equally unhelpful. Equality of opportunity cannot exist either. As Engels said, it can be reduced, but never fully abolished. People will inevitably be living in different locations, different climates, be raised by different people, have different skills and interests, and other innumerable inequalities. Equality of outcome is an equally unsubstantial goal. Equality of outcome in a literal sense would have to mean everyone becoming the same person. And anyone who thinks that Marxism is about enforcing equality of outcome has not even begun to understand it. Notice that even the famous phrase from each according to ability to each according to need that Marx used to describe the higher phase of communism implies neither equality of opportunity nor or equality of outcome, as people obviously have both unequal abilities and unequal needs. It is true that equality of outcome or equality of opportunity can be reduced to a certain minimum in certain respects, but whether this will be desirable or not will depend on what type of equality you are talking about. 
This is not just me being pedantic either. Although advocating for equality can work well as a slogan, it is very unhelpful when setting up concrete political goals or standards, and when using it, we can often be led to confusion by political opponents. Whenever making political arguments about equality, we are always talking about equality in some respect, even if we don't specify it. Because two people in an argument may both be using the word equality, but implicitly be talking about it in different respects, this can lead to deliberately deceiving argumentation. Consider this scenario, for instance. In a country where same-sex marriage is illegal, a same-sex marriage advocate says that same-sex marriage must be legalized to ensure equality. The opponent replies, but you already have equality. You have the equal opportunity to marry people of the opposite sex, just like every other citizen. This is an approximation of an argument that I have actually heard, and where it goes wrong is that the two people are talking about equality in different respects. The advocate is talking about equality with respect to consensually marrying an adult, while the opponent is talking about equality with respect to marrying an adult of the opposite sex. This is why even talking about equality before the law is deficient as a general political goal. This is also what happens when people ask questions like, if men and women are equal, shouldn't you be allowed to hit women? Or if women want to be equal, why don't we draft them to the military? Instead of asking questions about how to decrease violence in society in the first place, or resisting compulsory military recruitment, an exclusive focus on equality can lead us to ask all the wrong questions. Instead of asking for equal rights, why not ask for better rights? Consider another example, which I found in Angela Davis's book, Are Prisons Obsolete? Angela Davis mentions a self-proclaimed feminist and former prison warden, Tecla Miller, who wanted men's and women's prisons to be more equal, and because of that, she argued that we should increase the weapons arsenals in women's prisons, and also instruct guards in women's prisons to shoot at SKPs, just as they shoot at SKPs in men's prisons. Angela Davis correctly responds, it does not occur to Miller that a more productive version of feminism would also question the organization of state punishment for men as well. Paradoxically, demands for parity with men's prisons, instead of creating greater educational, vocational, and health opportunities for women prisoners, often have led to more repressive conditions for women. This clearly shows one negative outcome that advocating for abstract equality can have. Miller, by utilizing an abstract and formalistic ideal, ended up arguing for making women's prisons equally as bad as men's prisons, rather than considering the positive material goals we should be seeking with regards to prisons as a whole. This is partially where the worst aspects of liberal feminism come from, such as when, instead of asking how to establish better labor conditions and novel relations of production, formal notions of equality may lead us to advocate for increased diversity among CEOs. Marx avoided this mistake. Instead of seeing abstract notions of equality as the goal of politics, he saw the goal as the full development of each individual. The left is completely capable of seeking political emancipation without invoking abstract and often vacuous notions like equality. Instead, access to education, healthcare, improved labor conditions, more horizontal relations of production, and the full development of the individual are all better things to advocate for. I'd like to thank my Patreon supporters, Aesthetics, Aidan Williams, Jackson Ward, Joseph Patrone, Badhorn Choir, Quantum Computation, Rooftop Korean, Industrial Robot, Kelly Rankin, John Drum, No, Ivan, Jinsu An, Gibbering Idiot, Carrie, Juan Chavez, Timor Mar, Numu, Andrew Burns, Michael Doherty, D Lang, Sinabi, Isabel Abdullali, Robert Phillips, Adam Johns, Babak Golshahi, Tendies123, John Beatles, and Susie O. Thank you.